Hey team, welcome to the session on Coffee with Prab. And today we have a special guest, Mr. Krish. Hi Krish, how are you? Hello Prab. Good afternoon. Hi everyone. So in hi. So in today in today's session, what is special? Like in this particular cloud podcast, what we going to discuss? So today we can discuss about the topic called as shared responsibility model or more specifically the shared security responsibility model in cloud computing and how you have to understand that in the real time perspective oh it is That's just it. another model right it, that we it's are discussing. not uh, not yet and not exactly because many people have a confusion that when talking about shared responsibility model they think about only one single use case we are going to break that and we are going to discuss more about in detail about the you know more advancements in that and more challenges we have to we are facing in that actually okay so what is basically special about his matlab as we talking about that uh, cloud or any document enterprise and all that the roles and responsibilities basically vary so my question is basically for you is what is this buzzword and you know and how as a cloud security consultant is basically tackle over it okay i'll start from the last word itself cloud security consultant when you basically go for a business when you have a when you are moving to cloud platform as a cloud security consultant as you said this is a buzzword you have to keep in mind always the reason is because when you work in an enterprise you have something called as say you have a data center or maybe you have a infrastructure you manage it and it's your company you and you only there is no other third party but when you say you're going to the cloud platform you're shifting your data your servers your customer information uh, some sensitive data you, you and almost everything you are shifting to a third party called as a cloud service provider and for that third party called as a cloud service provider again you are having one more party in your company so the responsibility gets shared between that vendor and your company and that is generally what we call as a shared responsibility model so okay. the re- yeah the reason why we are discussing this particular topic here is because normally people think that when talking about shared responsibility model so again okay as we are taking it to the cloud service provider it's another data center so the physical security or the data center is taken care care by the cloud service provider rust we will take care or when talking about security certain security aspects they will take care or certain aspects we will take care like this many people have a assumptions on security and that assumptions is what we have to break initially to just to give you a start on this like i have seen many com- when i basically consulted for multiple organizations this is a common word i have seen krish as we are moving to the cloud platform at the end of the day the security is their responsibility i am storing my data on their premises i am storing the data on the cloud service providers premises so obviously it is going to be their responsibility so that is a kind of a uh, challenge we are having the second most important challenge which we are going to discuss here it this may be a bit lengthy video but it's going to be worth it for you team because the second most important point we have is that we always think about the word called as ias pass and saas and we all try to define this shared responsibility model based on that so that is also i wanted to break in this particular video great so as we talking about like what we learn in past is that you know one thing which is basically common with the cloud provider is he is responsible or accountable for physical security exactly. and we as a customer in all th- all the three service model whether it is iis pass and saas data and grc is our responsibility hypothetical scenario right now we are using one platform to record this session so um, if platform is unavailable okay we will not able to manage the session so it impact our governance also exactly so how like if we have on prem resources if we have on prem uh functions and all that it is easy for us to control end to end but when it comes to the cloud part okay so okay. how are you going to manage that as we as we discussed in a yesterday series of podcast on cloud security governance so we, let's let's break down into small small sections and then we can basically cover in detail yeah okay so to to make it a simple start when you go to a cloud service provider we always think about ias pass and saas like you said now so if i talk about the word called as ias pass and saas that i will say that itself is outdated because hmm. that word called as ias pass and saas is created some 20 years back where we are using mobile phones or maybe you are using land phones and there is no mobile phones or we are sitting peacefully without any kind of technology burden at that time we created the word called as ias pass and saas but now if you simply think about ias pass and saas can you show me one service one uh, one service in 
AWS or Azure or GCP or any top vendors where exactly follows the shared responsibility IaaS as and IaaS person says no. Because again, you go for a past service and you say that, okay, in the past platform, the OS is the responsibility of the cloud service provider. I can show you many past services where customer have access to the operating system. The same way if I go to IaaS, when you talk about the IaaS, we say that uh, the responsibility of operating system patching, maintenance updates come to the customer. But I can show you that is done by the provider in many cases. So at the mm. end of the day, these this is what we have to change. So even though these definitions are still valid, we can use that for discussions and all. But more than thinking about IaaS and PaaS and SaaS, we have to think about something called as a shared responsibility model. So again, we, we have a two party initially. We'll take it a bit more and we'll add a bit more later. But as of now, when we have a two party, one is a cloud service provider, one is a cloud service consumer. The cloud service provider indeed always is responsible for physical security, that is data center security, hardware maintenance and all the kind of stuff. And rest is basically based on the kind of service he is utilizing for example if i take a for instance if i take a service called as amazon ec2 azure vvm vm service google compute engine oracle uh, something or maybe uh, DataOcean droplet or any kind of a service like that instead of thinking about whether it's a ias or pass or saas service we have to think about exactly what is our exact responsibility in that what is the exact responsibility of the cloud service provider that is the first thing we have to think when talking about a service in any cloud platform. This is the first thing I always want to say, because never think about your service in the cloud IaaS SaaS perspective. Instead of that, take a service as a cloud security consultant, as a cloud GRC expert, as a cloud architect, you have to first of all understand on this particular service, what is my responsibility? What are all the things I have to take care? What is a provider's responsibility? And what is the exact demarcation point? If we can understand that clearly, that is the start of a cloud security, effective cloud security governance, I'll say. Okay. And and when it comes to the requirement, what, what is the next step then after that? So once you understand this, the next thing is that we have to clarify it because we can't assume. Like when I say understand your responsibility, it doesn't mean that you have to assume it. You have to review the provider's documentation. You have to talk to the provider and make a clarity on what is your responsibility metrics or what is a provider's responsibility metrics. And if you want, you can document it. You can basically mention it as a part of the SLN contract to make it make sure that, that things are happening properly. For example, let's say now if I go to a past platform and my cloud's provider says that they will take care of the OS updates, patching and all. But what do I have a guarantee on that? At the end of the day, I never have any guarantee because the provider simply say they will patch the underlying operating system. I don't have a visibility, right? So I need to make sure that they are doing it properly. There are two things. One is a contract in SLA. The second thing, we can go for a auditing and assessment, third party. That's okay. the things we can do. And uh, uh, so when you're talking about the audit and all that, so do you have any recommendations for the audit reports that or, you know, do you have any recommendation how to control the cloud provider in terms of governance and all that when many. it's dealing with? I will yeah. say many because we can go for the SOC reports, the, we can go for the ISO reports, NIST framework reports. We have a lot of stuff which is available on the provider's portal itself. The provider will basically have something called as a, they will provide a transparency there. So basically you can oh. download the report. Certain, certain reports needed to be a customer. You can download the report and oh. you can see the report. That's it. Now let's take a hypothetical scenario. The cloud provider is not comply with he doesn't maintain any kind of a report and all that. So in that okay. case, how, how we can overcome this governance issue? Again, if the cloud service provider doesn't maintain a compliance report and doesn't have a visibility over the infrastructure, at the end of the day, even if we have an SLN contract, we need to have a proper verification methodology for that. Otherwise, that would be a, that could be a challenge in the near future itself. So I would suggest going for a provider with a more transparency and clarity because, again, at the end of the day, it's your business. See, team, like mm. uh, this is one point we, uh, you know, we both discuss in our all our sessions. When you go for data security, we always say that data security data is stored stored in the cloud service provider, but all data security and compliance will always become the liability of the cloud service consumer. And even if the provider make a mistake, if they make a mess up, at the end of the day, we are going to face means our company is going to face challenge. That's it. Agree. Yeah, and no, last... I agree. I agree. Mm -hmm. I agree with the part. But bef I, I, before I want to move to the next point, I want to okay. just clarify here is when you say rigorous assessment process and all that, do you mm -hmm. what is your recommendation for that? So, because reports are not available. Definitely. See, that's the case where you have to ask them. We have talked to the cloud service provider. We have to demand the reports. Like basically, if you go for all the top providers, like if you go to AWS, we have something called as a AWS artifacts. You can log mm. into the AWS account, open the AWS artifacts. You will be able to find all the reports of the AWS cloud platform. 
like the same way if i go to azure i have a i have a azure reports are there so i can go to the particular cloud service provider portal get all the reports there to get me a clarity just in case if that report is not published or something is not there we have to contact them we have to talk to them and get the report and clarify it and it must be current like uh, they cannot say that we were compliance two years back they must that report they are giving must be a current report and that is mandatory for us to basically maintain the trust and assurance plus obviously that, contract the, in SLA. so do, do but do we have such kind of a reports in azure also and Google definitely Cloud also? definitely yes in azure we can basically there is no particular service names we have for it but we have a hmm. compliance portal is there from where we can download that five important thing you want to recommend to the viewers who are watching this video they have to consider when they're dealing with shared service model the shared security responsibility model data location mandatory data mm -hmm. location is very important understanding of all the legal compliance and regulatory requirements uh, third thing is that the necessary security controls and availability of it the fourth thing is that uh, continuous monitoring and assessment fifth thing is that assurance with the help of SLN contracts that's great. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Krish. Thank you so much and for, for a, this particular. Yeah. yeah. But again, one more thing I would like to add because I know that's why it's, you know, it may be a bit two more minutes long, but it's worth it for team. Now, this is basically the modern trend. The shared responsibility model also is outdated now because we have a, a much more new trend which is coming up called as advanced shared responsibility model. Where okay. normally when talking about the word plus cloud shared responsibility model, we have two guys, cloud service provider, cloud service consumer, provider business. But reality is that we have a lot of parties in between that. Cloud brokers, cloud carriers, uh, then cloud auditors. Then uh, in the various internet service providers means like there is cloud carriers actually like this. We have multiple or this uh, CWPP tools, CNAPP. So we have a lot of things in between which is coming up in between we and the cloud service provider. So again, now this becomes more complex because again, it's a matter for another video actually because all these makes the responsibility model again split up into different different parties. That's also we'll have to consider when you go for a cloud governance when talk talking about shared responsibility model. So but like the way we have our skill set certifications for the AWS cloud security and all that, do you do you recommend? Do you do we have any kind of a things on the floor which give them idea about to understand the thin line difference between this is the responsibility of a cloud customer, this is a responsibility of cloud provider, and uh, if I'm joining on the cloud customer side by this particular training, we get a visibility about how to manage cloud governance and all that. Okay, so I will. I have two things for it. Uh, if you're looking for a vendor specific or to get training by a vendor, like uh, uh, international certification kind of stuff, if you're looking for, you can go for CCSP, CCSK, and CCAK, which can definitely help you with all this stuff in detail. But if you are still looking for a customized training, like, you know, uh, over a period of time, after teaching a lot of people, after getting a lot of queries from different people and different organizations, I have realized that there is a lot of stuff which is basically having gaps in the market. So we have one more program called as the Advanced Cloud Cloud security governance, which gives you a more detailed idea on whatever we are discussing here. So that's, all these things like great. yeah, CCSP, CCSK, CCAK, advanced cloud security governance, and all these things can definitely help you with all this knowledge for sure. That is that is basically great, and uh, 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 you know, thank you so much, Malab. That was a great insight that you have shared on this area, and I'm sure you know this video will be watched by multiple people who want a visibility about. Uh, uh, you know about the cloud governance and all that hey team please let us know in the comment section what is the next video shall i make so i can disturb krish for that particular video and we'll make sure we'll enjoy that content as best we can thank you Indeed. so much for watching this video and thank you krish for coming on this particular season Thanks session everyone. sorry and uh, if you guys are new to the channel do subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon to make sure you should not miss the future videos on the later stage thank you so much thank you.